Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Today is January 17th, so that means this is the 17th day of 100 Days of Magic. And as I mentioned, there's a jump story from yesterday. Uh, this is There's not going to be a lot of action here, but um, by the way, I would like to welcome all the new subscribers. Uh, we had a, a growth yesterday. Uh, I think we had about 50 sub uh, new subscribers joined us from Facebook. I appreciate y'all. This is, uh, we've all got that pet card, the one card that you just like. And to most people, like, I, I know a guy that does Nightmare. I know a guy that does Jay Ballard. I know, uh, you know, we all have um, our own pet cards, if you will. Now, Jump is mine. And here is the jump story. Now, keep in mind, we were all new. This was 95 or 9, no, it wasn't 96. It was 95. Uh, I had just learned how to play not too long before, and I had taught a coworker, actually, my boss at the time, um, how to play. And he loved it. We all loved it. And we would play on our lunch breaks back in the break room. Well, his name is John. By the way, John, if you're watching, love you. And he had built a green and blue deck. Now, at the time, there was zero support for enemy colors. I mean, just zero. And I had explained to I mean, he, he, had, he had learned how to play, and John's a super, super intelligent guy, way more than I am. And he had, uh, you know, he'd read and he, he'd built his first deck and it was red and green. And I didn't know why he had picked red and green. Now, let's move to the, the play. We were in a stalemate on the board because he had a force of nature he was paying upkeep on. It, uh, force of nature is an 8 8. Big monkey, I'm not sure the creature type. 8 8 trample that you got to pay four green during your upkeep to keep from hurting you. And I had a wall of shadows, I do believe. It's the wall that can't take combat damage. All combat damage is reduced to zero. Now, at the time, I'm not sure if the rules were this way at the time or if this is just the way we understood it, but right now it's not this way, obviously. At the time, the wall would absorb all of the damage. Like the 8-8 trample would go, it would hit up against the 0-1 wall, and because it couldn't take damage, it was our understanding, however, albeit probably wrong at the time. Well, it was wrong, but we didn't know it. Like I said, there were no pros back then, you know, or there weren't that many, especially not in the local area. So, we were at this stalemate. I was at low enough life to where the force of nature would kill me if it hit me. And so we kept drawing. We draw goad for, I uh, said, it seemed like forever. It was probably just three or four turns, though. And he draws a card and his eyes light up and he just pushes that force of nature in. Attack with the force of nature, jump it. Now, if you've ever seen a jump force of nature, it's a, especially the original art for force of nature, it's a terrifying looking card, you know, and it flies. And it was such a good play. As it turned out, he had built his deck around uh, to what he called air traffic control. He was using cards like Rajan Spirit to take away flying and cards like Jump to give flying so that he had some. Now, keep in mind, this was at a time where we didn't have 19,000 different cards to pick from. We had just very, very few sets. And I thought that was super original. I had never seen anything like it. I was wild. Well, I started collecting jumps. Collecting may be the wrong word. I had an old principal one time of my elementary school. We all traded baseball cards back in the day, and I was... I was collecting uh, Jose Canseco's, and he had a Jose Canseco card that I didn't have, and I had duplicates of one that he had, and I had told him that I didn't want to trade away a Canseco to get a Canseco, 
and he's he he looked at me and he asked me a question that still still haunts me to this day are you collecting consecos or are you hoarding them so all through my magic life i have asked myself that and um yeah i'm hoarding jumps i have no shame in that game <laughs> so you know there's no version of this card that's worth any kind of money whatsoever the the alpha one here is uh the alpha and the beta probably the most expensive one i don't have an unlimited one represented here because i'm on a limited time this morning i gotta get to work and i didn't want to dig through the boxes i have i have like four or five fat pack boxes of nothing but jumps um last year it in at uh grand prix memphis i actually got Mark Poole to autograph one for me. Um, and I got a picture of him autographing it. So that, that was pretty sweet. He posed for it. He is a super nice guy if you've ever met him. Um, but, and I, I'm sure he was kind of taken aback because there was, I don't know, five or six cards there. And I was like, you know, I, told him a little special story about the card in the back and if I could and I get I think he was probably looking because he has done some art for some major cards and I'll bet probably not that many jumps out there signed because nobody but me cares um, weirdly enough though he said that he remembered years ago signing one for a guy up in Missouri I think that was me as well <laughs> But, um, flash forward, I've got a ton of jumps. 10th edition comes out. Now, 10th edition, they had this big scavenger hunt thing. Wizards of the Coast uh, had a list of 30 items, I believe, that you could gather together. They, it was obscure items from Magic's past. It was like a... a rule book with a shivan dragon on it an empty fallen empires pack uh uh like a invasion starter deck it was just weird stuff you know and the tiebreaker because they had to have a tiebreaker just in case two people brought in the same number of items was most copies of a single card now you won this backpack this magic the gathering backpack to be honest with you I didn't really want the backpack i was just wanting to win the scavenger hunt so um I think my uh, 7,000 copies of Jump is what it was at the time, one. Uh, and here locally, there's still a, a bunch of players who, who, are, are on, who get out there. To my good friend Danny, who's probably watching, he, uh, he brought me back some alphas and betas from various other parts of the nation. I appreciate it, Danny. Actually, the beta one he brought me was the one that I had autographed by Mark Poole last year. Um, to my good friend Adam Spain over at uh, Homeward Pass, he does a podcast. Uh, he's always looking everywhere he goes. Uh, and obviously, I I spend a ton of time looking through common boxes every time I go to a new shop and whatnot. Um, needless to say, in the local area, there aren't a whole lot of jumps out there in the wild. It's just kind of become my thing. Um, you know, I wonder who owns this art. I'm not really in the magic art game, but for this card, I might be. Huh. The original, of course. Now, then we go to M10, and, and I believe this is M10, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's M10. Um, my shop was open at the time, and they were previewing cards for M10. And a good buddy of mine, Wesley, he, he posts up, Oh my God, Brian, they've just spoiled jump. So at my shop, I had a standing rule starting at the... Uh, the they didn't have pre-releases for core sets at the time they had launch parties uh, starting at, at the launch party that any, anybody who won a game with a creature granted flying by jump won a pack forever and 
had people in drafts, especially who would draft three or four copies of, of Jump and just and build the green blue deck. That was awesome because they had just huge fat creatures, and then they jump. But that uh, allowed me this art, which is a more modern. Oh my gosh. Eric Deschamps. Oh my god. I just realized Eric Deschamps is going to be at Grand Prix Memphis. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to have to get all my full copies. I did not realize he, he, he did this art until just this moment. Anyway, I'm sorry. I floored a little bit. Uh, but that made it super common. It didn't make the card any better. It's not any better then than it was the first go around. Because the reason why Jump is such a not popular card is there are a hundred cards that do the similar thing, but only better. Some of them you know, draw you a card. Some of them draw you a card now. Some of them draw you a card later. Some of them have flashbacks. Some of, I mean, just, it, it's, yeah. There's a there's better versions of the card. I know it, but this is my pet card, and I need to get this art on a shirt. I really do. It's a shame that Mark Poole don't have Playmassive Jump. But I may be the only person who ever wants that, so I understand it. Anyway, that is what I have got for now. Uh, and I've got, as a result, uh, as I said, I've got a bunch of fat pack boxes and boxes of, of this kind. Which, by the way, the way they used to do these boxes were super, super, uh, I mean, they are gorgeous. They really are. But that's what I've got for today. I do have to get on the road and get to work. But getting super excited about this pre-release. Uh, what is this, Thursday? So... Uh, a lot of y'all will be going to midnight pre-releases tomorrow. Not this guy, because I have to work Saturday morning. Early. Going to be there at like 6, and it's an hour away. So, um, But that's what I've got. That's the jump story. I want to thank you so much to John Birch, the uh, uh, originator, I guess, in this story. And there we are. I will see y'all tomorrow. And I have got, I finally got a couple decks done. I'm probably going to do uh, some Kamigawa names or Chizai probably tonight or tomorrow. So to be sure in looking for that, I think that'll be deck number 389. Well, we will see y'all tomorrow. Have a good day.